Yes? Oh, very well now. Good morning. How are you so? What's this? The bride side and groom side? What's happening? <laughs> what have you done? Are you all infectious or something on one side? Uh, it's lovely to see you all gathered in. Uh, thank you for all your kind thoughts and prayers. Most of you know that we've been sort of uh, drive, uh, dodged COVID for over two years and finally succumbed to it. So somebody in here must have given it to me Sunday two weeks ago. So the Lord will have a word with you afterwards, hopefully. Or perhaps it was a godsend, who knows, but um, thank you for all your thoughts and prayers and uh, uh, just the kind, kind words and the food that was left. So don't think you have to stop sending food just because I'm out about again, feel free. We enjoyed that, the little packages that were arriving. Uh, Sandy Rosary and Rosal both contracted it on Saturday and Sunday. Rosary was quite ill through the week, but she's bounced back. See, women just are not as resilient as us men when it comes to flu, sure they're not. See, the one very brave man said that. Not everybody else is doing it, but um, it's lovely uh, to see you all gathered in. Uh, just a few announcements. Firstly, uh, in regards to the regulations, uh, wearing the face masks uh, now, the church has advised that we still use them coming in and out and we're, if we're moving about in church um, and if you're singing, it's advisory. Okay, I know I will wear mine. I've been very careful. Um, we just don't know how we caught it, but we caught it, and it's not, it's not a very nice thing to have. So it, it's still out there, but we're just going to be extra careful. Uh, still sanitize coming in and out. We're down for coffee afterwards down into the hall. Uh, so again, enjoy yourselves, but just be mindful that it's still, COVID's still around us. Boys and girls have got out after the first song, so hopefully, I'm going to ask the leaders to hold on to you, so you get blown, blown away, walk into the hall. <laughs> But, uh, and then we'll be down uh, later to join you for tea and coffee. Now, tonight, 1859, it's our uh, worship service is back. It's in the hall from quarter to seven. We're going to begin uh, with tea and coffee. And it's a bit more relaxed. It's around tables, uh, a bit like sort of a cafe. And then the bishop is going to speak to us. Uh, David McClay is coming tonight. Uh, Catherine Ford and David, and I think maybe Abel is going to be helping with the worship band. Uh, so they're going to be leading us in worship tonight in the hall. So if you come up here tonight and it's in darkness, we're all in the hall. So that's where we are heading to. Also, this is back. <laughs> it seems, doesn't seem like it, but it's over two years since we've had a breakfast service. Uh, so next Sunday morning, we're here for half nine at communion here in church at half past nine and then we will be down in the hall uh, from quarter to eleven from quarter to eleven and to gather there for our morning worship all together this is going to be once a month and um, it's going to be in the hall once a month and it will always begin with a bacon bath or anybody here not like bacon any vegetarians amongst you you can just have the bath that's fine or we could we've got a lettuce for that as well but um, all right, do you know what people? This does go viral. Saying that that is so there's I'm not anti-vegetarian or vegan or whatever. Just uh, we'll be having that next week in the hall. Now, special request for all the men. Uh, Mike is going to head that up. Mike is not here this morning, but if you can, will you try and be at the hall? I think is it ten? Just after ten o'clock, men. All the chefs. Okay, Mark, you did a wonderful job the last time. You hate me for saying that, don't you? But uh, if you can gather down there, uh, and they'll be getting the breakfast ready uh, for us uh, as we appear at quarter to 11. Anybody excited about that next week? Yeah, yeah happy free breakfast. Okay, so uh, that's, what, what's, that's what's happening next, next week. Uh, also, this is our last week. Friday, the application closes uh, for our... Uh, youth and community pastor full time. It's been wonderful. We've had five applications already, uh, so that's that's been. It would be terrible if we had none, but but we actually have five applicants and uh, uh, already for that post. So please pray this week. Uh, just if anybody else wants uh, to apply for it, that they do so, and then just pray for this position because it's quite important for us as a church as we are coming out of this whole pandemic about rebuilding in the community, about about focusing more on our young people and not just our young people, 
but the families that are living in the area and indeed the community that's around us. I pray that God will send us the right person uh, for that role. And that's, that's closing on Friday. And then is uh, hopefully interviews the following week. And then we hope to appoint probably around about the middle of March. So please, please, please pray for that. That is so, so important. I think that's probably most of the announcements. Everything else is back on this week. Uh, up and running again. Just running through this. Yeah, the bishop is doing, uh, bishop's appeal is, um, he's doing an appeal, but he's, he, he's cycling around the whole diocese, so he's been out training. He was even out yesterday in that weather. Uh, so I, I, I put up what day he's coming past John Bow, and if you happen to be in the area, it would be good to stick a stick in a spoke. So I was going to say, you know, do we have Alan? And smile as we support him. Uh, he's doing that. And then he, they've asked us to announce, um, it'll be on the web page later, uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming around and uh, we're back actually this year they're going to have the celebration again in Mount Patrick. It's a wonderful day if you can get a chance or if you're off school. What, what you can do is you can go into Mount Patrick early in the morning. I think the last bus leaves the cathedral at half eight. You can park your car up at the cathedral. Then you can get a bus out to Saul, which is the wee old church. That was one of the first churches that Patrick made or uh, set up in Ireland. And then you can walk, you have a communion service there, and then they do a pilgrimage walk, a prayer walk in from Seoul into the cathedral. Or you can just go to the cathedral at 12 o'clock for the service and free lunch. But uh, I want to encourage you, but there'll be more details up about that later. I think that is all of the announcements. Uh, the register for vestry people finishes today. So if you haven't registered for the general vestry of the church, uh, you can do that today. What that simply means is if you've been contributing to the church uh, for the past year or more, you can join what it's like the membership, the official membership of the church. You don't have to do it if you've already filled out the forms in the past couple of years or even before, you don't have to do it again. But if you want to be part of that vestry, which helps with the voting process or voting on a select vestry and different things, you can join as well, and the forms are in the foyer. I think that is everything. Have I forgotten anything? Anybody? No? Readers? See, before I came to that, Mark, that was the last announcement. Okay, so Mark has actually asked again, I'm going to go back to people reading in church. So if you were a reader uh, and you wish to continue to read, please speak to Mark, or if you would like just to read, uh, that is basically uh, reading scripture, reading the scripture verses for the day from the front. Please speak to Mark and he will gladly uh, take your name and we'll start a reading. We're going to hopefully uh, just think and work on this out during Lent. We'll, we'll start that again, Mark, if that's okay. I think that's everything. Have I forgotten anything? Please. I want to thank, thank for last week Judith and, and, and Sandra and Leslie and, and even John Dennon for just been thrown in at the deep end with just a couple of days notice. And uh, I, I got to watch it again when it was recorded and the gremlins and the praying orangutan was, was the highlight of the service. Did anybody see the orangutan on the screen? See, you should have had your eyes closed. That was prayer time. You should have seen it, you should have had your eyes closed. But listen, thank you so, so much for, for stepping in at, at short notice. What that has highlighted, it's quite simply over the next few weeks, if you're technologically minded at all, we need a media team set up, okay? Uh, we need somebody that can sit and do PowerPoint while uh, the rest of us are working here at the front of the church. So that's something to look forward to as well. Okay, I'm going to pray, and then we'll stand in a moment and begin with our meeting. So Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, whilst the rain and the wind is raging around us outside, Lord, we can come in to the peace and calm of your house. And Lord, so we just pray now that your Holy Spirit will just fill each one of us afresh. Lord, may you just sweep through this place this morning, Lord, and may we be refreshed, Lord, and reinvigorated, Lord, for at the task that is ahead. And so, Lord, we just leave all these things in your precious care. And we all said, and then we're going to stand and begin with our greeting. Okay, yes, stand. Feel free to stand. Any chance? 
telling us? You know, those here this morning? The Lord be with you. We're going to sing, O Church on our face. Exercises. You know, we started in the new year. I know we've had a few breaks just with different services that have been on, but uh, today we're going to look at what it means actually to read and to read God's scriptures. But I want to pray for us now and then uh, we will have our prayer of confession. Blessed Lord, who has caused all the holy scriptures to be written for our own. Grant us that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of life which thou hast given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we are going to uh, pray the words of the Confession. Almighty God, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, part of our reading today is from Psalm, uh, it's actually 115, not 95, as it says, it will say a moment on, on the screen, but we're going to read from verses 105 to 112, and hopefully we are going to join us together, so we will reply in, in yellow, and uh, I will say in a little bit that is in white. And so we're going to use a uh, psalm together. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light for my heart. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much, preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth, and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your love. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees. Amen. Amen. And now, these are not the set readings for today, so the bishop's coming tonight, so if you have a, if you have a complaint, please speak to him. That's the way I get you to come back to church again. But um, it's just a thing, uh, being off for a, a few days and being stuck in a room. If you know me, I was like a caged animal. I was stuck in, we call it the COVID corridor in the rectory now because we weren't long into the rectory just over a year ago and Rory had it, so he was stuck in the downstairs bedroom. And then I was stuck in it from, I think, Wednesday night, Thursday night, right through to Sunday night. And you're probably thinking, that's not an isolation period, but unfortunately, Rosalind and Rose, we both tested positive. So, do you know what? It's a terrible thing to say. It was great, because it meant I got out into the rest of the house. Uh, I, I could roam. It wasn't so good for Rosemary, but anyway, um, I think she was glad she didn't have to keep sending me food. Because there's nothing like somebody saying, can I have another cup of tea or a cup of coffee? You can guess, patience sort of is one of those things you have to pray for quite a bit. But... Having the time being caged up like an animal, I think it's quite good that I got to read a wee bit more. I got to catch up on Netflix. It's wonderful what we've done without it. But um, as I thought about uh, uh, talking today about reading God's Word, I kind of uh, leaned more towards these scriptures and indeed Psalm 115 and this scripture today. So this is the reason why we're using 2 Timothy chapter 3. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women, who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Yamre opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds, who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far, because in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purposes, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. What kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured? Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life 
in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And now the infant, from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for uh, your word this morning. And Lord, as we just sit now in this place, or as we have joined online, or we're watching it later, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will quicken that word to our hearts. Lord, not only that we'll hear it, Lord, but we'll actually act on it. Amen. Amen. Don't be panicking in those couple of days that I had in isolation. I didn't have a revelation that I was going to preach for a good hour every Sunday. Because I can just tell the way some of your wee brains work when you heard that's an awfully long reading. You know, who thought it was a long reading? Nobody's put their hands up. Thanks, Leslie. A couple of these have probably thought this is going to be a long sit. But it's not really. But that particular reading, as I, as I sort of look through the different scriptures over these past uh, sort of week and a half or so for today, it was one of the readings that stuck out because it was all really about Paul speaking to this young man, Timothy, and saying, look, you know, this life is not easy. You're going to be coming across all these people. And in the last days, who actually, when I was reading that passage from Timothy thought, that's just like today, isn't it? Is that just like society, the society in which we live? And the scary thing is, he was talking about the church, not society. And even within church, we perhaps would recognize some of those traits and some of those words that were said. But as we, as a church, build again. This is not, it's not a new start for us, but we're continuing to build. And people are probably getting fed up, and I'm even getting fed up talking about coming out of the pandemic, what's on the other side. Because I kind of feel it's been a time of preparation. And it's been a time of preparation for real revival in not just this community, but in this land. We look around us, and even that song that we sang at the start talks about war, talks about putting armor on. And we can see what's happening in Ukraine and Europe and throughout the world where sides are coming together and you wonder, what, what, why are we still fighting? But we are because we're human beings. And we've got all these different traits within us. But as we exercise, as we look at this little series called God's Gym, and I, you know I played on the words of the gym and it's really Jesus in me. It's focusing on what it really means to have Jesus Christ within our hearts. And over the past few weeks, we've looked at what it means to belong, to believe, to pray. Uh, we missed out last week, and then this week is about read, to read, and to read God's Word, and to inwardly digest it. It's not really that gross at times, but it's about feeding on it, and having it within our hearts on our lives. And with any exercise, as most know, reps are important, okay, about repeating the exercise and it makes you stronger. So I'm probably as guilty as everybody else at reading the Bible. And probably every one of us maybe has one Bible in the house or we maybe have many Bibles. I don't know what it is, but senior clergymen, people always buy a Bible when you leave a church. I don't know whether that's an insult, that you've never read it. Or it's just to think that's another thing that they can do. But the society in which we live today, and in the world in which we live, we have so many translations of the Bible. We have so many copies of it that's easily accessible. We've got it on our iPads. We've got it on our phones. And never more so than now has the Word of God been so readily, readily accessible to 
to each one of us. But yet, and I was guilty of this, we don't really read it that much, do we? If we were to be honest. Probably don't. And I'm as guilty of it as the next person because you always think, oh, I'll do that later or I'll do it another time. But during that time of isolation, you should realise how important it is. And for me, it was good to actually practice what I preach. Don't do it all the time. As I always say, you just need to sit in the car with me for 10 minutes and be like, goodness me, he shouldn't, he shouldn't even be in this. He should be probably in prison, but never mind ordained. But anyway, it's about learning how to read God's Word. I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up, but I'm sure some people here have done an Alpha course in the past, or you've done some sort of Christianity Explored. But there's always a little section in it on how to read the Bible. And many years ago, I always remember, uh, you know, in the church I grew up in, said, you must read it from start to finish. So, of course, you start reading it, and you've got all these begattings at the start. You know what I'm talking about? Family trees, okay? And you've always, oh, well, what's the point of this? But you read it anyway. And then you get to the other bits, and you get the commandments, you get to the Exodus, and you come right through, and then you get to the New Testament. And I always say to people, you know, I was taught, read the Bible, you must read it from cover to cover, and literally that's what I did as a young teenager. But now, it would be more selective. And if somebody says to me, Mervyn, tell me what I should do. I mean, I haven't really read this, but where should I start? And I would say, something start with God's Word, John, something simple, easy to understand, and then expand it. Start with a reading program. Um, Rick, Rick Warren, and I've taken this quote from the Alpha Course, and it says quite simply, it says, reading the Bible generates life, it produces change, it heals hurts, it builds character, it transforms circumstances, it imparts joy, it overcomes adversity, it defeats temptation, it infuses hope, it releases power, and it cleanses the mind. And, and I think that is a powerful quote about how important the Bible is. I think it's wonderful in this church. And there's not very many churches that you can go into, but there's a Bible mostly in every pew. Is there a Bible in the pew in front of you? And I think that's a wonderful thing. I'm not sure when that was at the John Dillon's time or something, and he's got a lot more Bibles. And you've got the good old Northern Ireland version, as I say, the international version in the pews in front of you. Many years ago when I was going to church, and if you went to church, you don't go to church without a Bible under your arm. And the bigger the better. The bigger the better, it's great. And the more bookmarks you had, you know, the terrible thing I used to do was you used to go through it and just randomly highlight things so it looked good when you open the pages up. But see, I'm in the old secrets now. But realistically, reading the Bible is not probably on all of our to do lists. And it should be. When you read this quote, when it says it releases power and it cleanses the mind. And that's so, so important for every one of us. Uh, the, the psalm that we read recently. Anybody here know Amy Grant, singer? I thought I was going to marry her, but I married Ruth instead. But didn't really know her, but it was just one of those things you grew up with in my teenage years. Oh, she's nice, she would do me. She's a good holy girl, Christian singer. But she used to sing a song, Your Word is a Lamp to My Feet. And it sort of stuck in your head, but it's from the psalm. It's basically talking about how God's word can light our paths. From the youngest person to the oldest, it never changes, but it can give us great, great strength. Jesus even said, right, so this, this, this is a test for your Bible knowledge. This is what Jesus said. People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We should be wheel of fortune or spin the wheel and see Anybody know who he said that to? Who did Jesus say that to? Satan. He said it to the devil. So if Jesus is telling the devil how important it is, how important God's word is, it's good enough for us as well, isn't it? During the temptations in the wilderness, Jesus quoted scripture back to the devil when he was being tempted. And here's the fantastic thing. And I don't know if the bread was gluten free or not or whatever, so don't be getting upset with me. Okay? 
But Jesus, just when he came, he says, look, you cannot live by bread alone, but you must live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Here's the thing, you hear God speaking to you every day. Does he speak to you constantly? You can hear his voice in your ears. If you should, you should be locked up. But you don't, you don't actually hear the audible voice of God. Now, there are times in people's lives when they do hear that audible voice of God, but we don't hear it day in and day out. But we can. And this is how we hear it. By reading his word. By opening the Bible and reading it. That's how we can hear his word. Uh, Nicky Dumbbell says, the Bible is the most powerful, popular and precious book in the world. It's the biggest seller and remains the biggest seller. So why should we read the Bible? Quite simply, Jesus tells us to. He tells us it's the most important thing that we can do. And when he's speaking to the devil, if you think about it, Jesus is, is uh, looking at his, his life and the scriptures that he learned from when he was a boy right up through. And in Jewish traditions, they would have to rhyme off the first four books of the Bible. Does anybody even know what the first four books are? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, okay. So they would have had to learn those books off by heart before being accepted fully into their church. Can you imagine us having to do that here? You want to join the, uh, the best rate, general best rate? Okay, you need to write off the whole book of John. What do you think? The tr- tricky window? We can probably remember John 3.16. Very easy verse to remember. But Jesus replied to the devil came from Deuteronomy 8. And it's where we are told in, in, in scriptures that you are to inwardly learn and if you've ever been to Israel or you've come across Orthodox Jews, at certain times of the day when they're doing their prayers, you'll see this little box. Has anybody seen it? They wear this little box on their head and then they've got this leather strapped to their arms with, with, with a little box there. And that is the scriptures of God. And it says in Deuteronomy 8, it says that you should, that, that, that you should fasten the scriptures to your head and to your arms. So it's having the head knowledge but also it's having that knowledge in your hands when you're working for God that you are guided by him. And also when you go into, uh, it comes from that when you place the scriptures on your doors. If you're ever in Israel or in a, in a Jewish home, you will see there's a little bar on the door that most people touch it in. Have you, have you ever seen that? So that's scripture as well. It's in that as well. That's where it comes to just to fasten the scripture to your lintels and to your posts and all that. So, we could probably preach a lot more of that, but I find this image quite important because I kind of thought, you know, sometimes we can get God uh, mixed up a wee bit. Now, don't worry, I'm not rubbishing what happens uh, in, 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 in that faith, but there's a wee bit of me thinks that when God is talking about having that knowledge, fasten it to your head, it's in here. It's having God's Word in here your head, or the this morning in your noggin, or whatever you call it, your nut, but actually having it went in. Having the knowledge of the scriptures within. Having your hands, having it fastened to your arms, so as you can do God's work. Now I'm not saying God's work is not about being a preacher, or being a clergyman at the front of church, because believe you me, you wouldn't want it. Alright, it was a joke. Okay, but it's actually about us working for God wherever we are placed. Whatever pro- profession we're in, you know, you may, you know, what, whatever family you're placed within, you know, whatever friendship group that you're in, is about working out God's word with those around us. I love this. It says, this is, I've taken this from the message. As I said, the Bible, now for us in the, world, in the Western world, there are so many different translations. And sometimes if you find it 
heavy. I was always taught this. When I grew up, it was King James Version and nothing else. And, 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 and I love the, the strength and the words of the King James Version. But just sometimes, maybe, it can sound a wee bit confusing. But, so we've got other different versions of the Bible. And I have actually lifted this from, uh, from the message translation. And it says there's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another. Showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes and training us to live God's way. Through the word we are put together and shaped for the tasks God has for us. Through his word, we are put together and shaped for the tasks that God has for us. Paul encourages Timothy to keep this message alive about reading, reading the scriptures and inwardly digesting them. And you're probably thinking about, okay, how, how do we do this? I say, start easy. Just start easy. And I always remember, um, and, and I've shared this with you before, um, that Liz McElhenney, Reverend Liz McElhenney, when we were ordained, and we had to go back for, I just call it correct, all training, but you had to go back and do holy things once, once every so many months. And I remember going with Liz, uh, and a few others, we went down to Newcastle, and, and I've shared this, and it was my light bulb, light bulb moment about reading the Bible. And she said, pick, she gave us a couple of different pieces of scripture, and she says, pick those, take whatever piece of scripture you like, go away to a quiet place, or go out for a walk, and go and sit down somewhere and read it. And then reread it slowly, and then pray and ask God, Lord, speak to me through your word. And then read it again. And for me it was like, I, I can't do the graphics, but it was like big words just came out of the passage that I read. And for, for me it was Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And as I was sitting there feeling very inadequate about the task ahead about ministry, and as I looked at the beauty of the moors, as I looked at those mountains, and God basically said, what are you worried about? He says, see this beauty that you're taking in? He says, I need that. And he says, I need that. And he says, I will give you strength. And it was the most profound thing that probably happened to me in my Christian life. And I go, wow, so this is how we should read the Bible. I want to encourage you, I was saying, Bible in one year is brilliant. It's a little app you can get your phone or you can look it up online. Uh, it's, 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 it's an alpha course resource, maybe Gumble. There's loads of other wee apps out there as well. Or you can just quite simply pick up a Bible and open it. And as I said, if you don't know what the, where to start, start with John. Just read a couple of verses, set it down, come back to it, read it again. If you don't understand something, keep a wee book and write it down. Who would ask me? Because I probably couldn't answer your questions. But seriously, but if you have any questions, ring me. As I say, not after 11 at night, because we get drunk by then. But can I just sort of encourage you to keep the message alive? Paul says, don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. And that was a real message for us as a church. Don't be naive, but learn to listen and to work with this precious, precious book. Uh, the message translation of one of the verses says, don't let it faze you. Don't let this life faze you, but read God's word. And it's just funny when we do read that passage and even go home and read it, and look at the world around you, it'll, it'll just make you not, not smile because the world in which we are in is, 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 is not in a good place, but it just shows you how easily God can speak to you. 
So you probably have just realised it's quote marks in like the city was when you preached too long or some of these are dozing off already. So I better, I better bring it to an end. But look, as we exercise, please can I encourage you to read God's Word. Even this week, if you get a chance, just occasionally flip, flip on the Bible, download it for your iPad, or my phone's over there, but download it for your phone, whatever, just read a couple of verses, because it's absolutely wonderful. I can't recommend it enough. If you're struggling in your Christian faith, open the book. Ask God to speak to you through the words in those pages. Don't we start with the massacres and some of the books in the Old Testament? Start with John and work your way through it. And then hopefully you will see the strength that comes from it. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Lord, we just thank you for how it is God breathed. And Lord, just even for those words of Jesus, Lord, when he was being tempted, Lord. He said, we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Lord, let us just steep ourselves in your word. Lord, let us be open to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us through your word. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to act on it. And so Lord, as we, as we give you thanks, Lord, uh, for everything that we have, Lord. And, and Lord, just when we give you thanks for health, Lord, we remember those who are ill among us. Lord, we remember those who are still, Lord, suffering, Lord, from the effects of cancer, Lord, and awaiting treatment. Lord, we just pray for healing in their lives. Lord, indeed, we do pray for those, Lord, who are still suffering the effects of COVID. And Lord, we just pray, indeed, Lord, that you will draw close to them. And Lord, that you will protect us, Lord, and that you will keep those safe, Lord, who, who tirelessly work day in and day out to bring us care. Lord, in your mercy. And so, Lord, we want to pray, Lord, for those who have been bereaved. Lord, just not in these past few weeks, Lord, but in this past year. And Lord, sometimes the pain of grief, Lord, can overwhelm us. But Lord, you've said in your word, Lord, the blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so Lord, we pray for your comfort to be upon all who mourn today. Lord, we just especially remember, Lord, that the Hellas family at this time, Lord, and uh, just Lord, on the, on, the, on the loss of a father and a brother, we just ask indeed that you will draw to them. Lord, we look at the situation in the world around us. Lord, especially for, for those in Ukraine. And Lord, we pray for those faithful Christians, Lord, who are praying day in and day out for peace. Lord, because again, in your word, Lord, you say, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the earth. And so, Lord, we pray for peace to prevail. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. So, Lord, we just pray indeed for the days and the week ahead. Lord, for this parish, Lord, even as this uh, window closes, Lord, for the job opportunity. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will send us, Lord, uh, the person, Lord, who is going to continue the work in this church within this, within our young people, Lord, and within our community. Lord, we just pray for uh, those, Lord, who are in, in teaching, Lord, uh, in schools, Lord, that as they prepare to go back this week, Lord, that you will indeed keep them safe. And so, Lord, we just join together in the beautiful prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have a tremendous hymn to close with for just a moment.
the church is one foundation. But can I encourage you just think about it, think about the Bible, think about how important it is. Uh, and if you want, I'll stick up later on the WhatsApp and later on the Facebook page and the web page the different apps that you can get, that you can read it online. But hopefully the rain's off a wee bit and I'll, and I'll see you down in the hall. Uh, you can join with us uh, for some coffee uh, after uh, this song. Don't forget to come back tonight again uh, and you can hear the bishop speaking, but make sure you come in the hall. We're going to stand and sing the church is one foundation.